Christmas Day And old familiar carols play Loud and sweet the words repeat Peace on earth, goodwill to Thank you so much, Greg, for Christmas bells. And friends, that is a reminder where we can still say Merry Christmas, even though it is the day after Christmas, it's December 26, 2021, we can still say Merry Christmas as we have just now entered the season of Christmas. Friends, we're delighted that you're joining us in worship this morning or today, whenever you're watching it. Uh, we are sending this video, this service, uh, just by video, we are not having in-person worship in the sanctuary this morning at Christ Covenant Church on Sunday, December 26th, 2021. And we pray that you will be enriched and your faith strengthened as we work together and journey through this worship service. It is the day after Christmas, as I noted, and uh, if you look over there, you can see that it is only the Christ candle that is lit the four candles that surround the Christ candle that we light each Sunday during Advent are not there anymore because we're not waiting for Christ's first Advent. Uh, he has come. Emmanuel, God is with us. And so friends, once again, we welcome you to worship at Christ Covenant Church in Harleysville, Pennsylvania on this Sunday, December 26th. We continue in worship with a call to worship. When Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph, God was there. When Jesus was presented at the table, God was there. When Simeon held Jesus in his arms, God was there. When Anna recognized Jesus in the temple, God was there. When Jesus was in the temple and Mary and Joseph were on the road, God was there. This very morning, God is here. In the future that we cannot see, God is there. Let us worship God, who is always with us. 
Now please join in singing with the lyrics on your screen, What Child Is This? Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 148, and I'll be reading from the message. Hallelujah. Praise God from heaven. Praise him from the mountaintops. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his warriors. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you morning stars. Praise him, high heaven. Praise him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, oh, let them praise the name of God. He spoke the word, and there they were. He set them in place from all time to eternity. He gave his orders, and that's it. Praise God from earth. You sea dragons, you fathomless ocean deeps, fire and hail, snow and ice, hurricanes obeying his orders, mountains and all hills, apple orchards and cedar forests, wild beasts and herds of cattle, snakes and birds in flight, earth's kings and all races, leaders and important people, robust men and women in their prime, and yes, gray beards and little children. Let them praise the name of God. It's the only name worth praising. His radiance exceeds anything in earth and sky. He's built a monument, his very own people. Praise from all who love God, Israel's children, 
intimate friends of God, hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for that music ministry, Carla and Zach Metz. We appreciate it greatly. Our second text for today, our New Testament text is Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52 from the New Living Translation. And this is when Jesus and his parents travel uh, to Jerusalem to the temple. And perhaps some of you are traveling even now at this time. Luke 2, 41 through 52. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? but they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth, Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. May God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And friends, 
Uh, grace and peace to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Today's short meditation comes from a pastor and scholar that, that Pastor Kathy and I look at and read uh, with quite uh, a bit of regularity, a guy that we really like, Reverend David Los, L-O-S-E, Reverend David Los. He writes about this text. He says, this is one of those passages that is hard for modern hearers to understand, largely because our lives are so markedly different than those in Jesus' day. How, we wonder, could a family leave a child, let alone not notice for an entire day? And as an aside, has he ever seen the Home Alone movies? Well, he writes and says, we can imagine the analogy would be like taking a family vacation to New York City and driving home in our minivan, never noticing that our child wasn't there until we were near Chicago, then driving back and searching for three days only to find him in Times Square. But life in ancient times wasn't nearly as individualistic as it is today, and there was no nuclear family. Families, extended families, distant relatives, members of the local village and community would have all taken this pilgrimage together. They were likely joined on the way by other families, other caravans of pilgrims, and all formed a loose company. In this kind of setting, every child had multiple parents and every adult looked after whatever children were nearby. So, what's most odd about this story isn't that Jesus remained behind and they didn't notice. According to Jesus, what's odd is that his parents wouldn't know where to find him. Three days they search in vain until uh, they find him doing the will of his father. Three days. Doubtless, there is some symbolism here, as his disciples will also wonder and search and grieve in vain for three days before they discover that he was again doing the will of his father. But it seems odd to Jesus that his parents couldn't locate him immediately. What may, have, what may seem just as odd to us is his mother's reaction. Not the first one. That one we can identify with immediately. She is anxious, upset, maybe even furious. But after Jesus explains, actually retorts, that they should have known that he would be in the temple, his mother, although not understanding, treasures these things. Just like at his birth. Except this time, just what she is treasuring is less clear. It can't be losing him or searching in vain or receiving his sharp retort in response to their questions. So, what is it? Perhaps it's the feeling every parent gets when you see your child grow beyond you. When you see your child fulfill his or her potential and live into his or her destiny, perhaps in this moment, Mary remembers all the prophecies and all the promises of 12 years earlier, and it suddenly sinks in that, yes, this is her son, God's son, the Redeemer of the world. And that, friends, truly is something to treasure. Amen. Let us pray. Redeeming God, who came to earth in the form of 
your incarnate Son, Jesus, our Lord, be with us today. We thank you for your presence with us each and every day of the year, and especially for your presence during this season that made itself known to humanity through the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. As your Holy Spirit was present in that Christmas story, as it was present to Mary and Joseph and to all the people that and the people that were present in that story that we know and love fill us with your holy spirit during our stories this christmas season whatever they hold fill our world and our lives with your spirit and help us to be bold to share your spirit with those around us nearby and globally we lift up the needs of others and our own needs on this day. And we take a moment to pray silently for those who are sick. And we lift up those on our hearts and minds who are sick right now. Comforting God, we ask that you comfort those who mourn, who have lost loved ones. And right now in silence, we lift up those who mourn. We thank you for those who keep peace and who serve in our armed forces and in other areas, who fight for justice and who fight to bring freedom. And so now in silence, we lift up those serving in these capacities. And God, we lift up those who struggle with other situations, whether medical or emotional, physical, spiritual, relational. There are so many other situations that might not fall into one of these categories that often get covered. We lift them up to you, God. For our world and our nation, especially areas in conflict and division and natural disaster, we lift up areas that have been in the news or perhaps those that are near and dear to our heart. We offer these to you. And now, God, we offer to you prayers that are on our own hearts and minds and prayers that situations in our own lives, needs that we have or concerns that are weighing us down. We offer these to you. Lord, our God, Emmanuel, God with us, who is always with us, we pray that your light that is, seems to be more present during this season, but we know that it is always present. We pray that you would help us to feel your presence each and every day to the end of the age. And we pray all of these things in the name of your incarnate Son, Jesus our Lord, who taught each of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now please join in singing our closing hymn, Joy to the World. To the world indeed joy to the world the lord is come once again we remember that because we see the christ candle here lit proudly and friends uh, we remember that as well that christ lives in our hearts and now receive the benediction this is from colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17 and remember i'm sure that some of you uh, maybe received new clothes and you've clothed yourselves in new ways. Friends, this is a reminder that we can always clothe ourselves with Christ and let's remember to do that as we move into the new year. Once again, Colossians 3, 12 to 17 as our benediction uh, for today. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, Christ covenant as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Good words as we move into the new year. Friends, just a reminder as well, uh, we're thankful for the ministry that has gone on this trying year, this challenging year at Christ's covenant and all around. We would encourage you as we move into the new year to continue praying for all the churches, praying for this church as well as we move into the new year once again. And now friends, uh, I would remind you as well that uh, it is December 26th today. We will have our worship service again, of course, next Sunday, Sunday, January 2nd, as we begin the new year and we will celebrate communion. That's always a wonderful thing to do as we begin the new year. Now, our postlude is going to be great. Don't turn the video off yet. I want you to, we all want you to enjoy this wonderful video of a number of carols sung by our choir and, and others as well. So enjoy the video from the uh, Christ Covenant Church Virtual Choir.